Hey guys, Calvin here from Move. Today I want to show you how we're able to transition between different materials by using an object's proximity. Now I came up with this idea a few weeks ago while I was working on a project where I needed to be able to transition between a clear ice and a frosted ice. Um, I'll just put that up on screen right now. So here you can see this absolute bottle and I wanted to have some frosted ice around the bottle but the further we go away from that bottle I wanted it to clear up and be less, well, frosted. And um, that was a bit of a challenge to get to work but I think I have the solution. It's very clean, it's actually quite simple and um, it's not that difficult to understand to be completely honest. So I hope that this is gonna be a useful tutorial for you guys. It definitely is really useful for me and I'm definitely gonna be using this in the future. But with that said, let's dive right into this. So first of all, what you can see on screen is just a small scene setup of just bunched up a few different objects because the beautiful thing is this uh, this shader um, this works beautifully across different objects so with this scene um, I have already got two shaders prepared uh, I'm not going to walk you through them in much detail today is more about the transition uh, so let's just open up a new window I'm gonna open up the shader editor I'm gonna go ahead and change this to render view I will quickly change uh, the background or the environment to a sky texture to get um, some nicer visuals. We're going to reduce the sun intensity and the strength of everything because this is typically always way too strong. Um, I will have to change the render engine to cycles. I'm also going to change this to the GPU. Just going to bring up the sun elevation slightly and um, yeah. Let's have a look at the materials. Okay, so the first material that I've got prepared here is a water. Um, I've actually animated one of the parameters here. So this is very simple. We've got the object of the texture coordinates going into the wave texture. We've got a second noise on top of it, layering. And when I press play, let's just quickly change to this other view. You can see that we've got these waves animating very slightly. It's not really doing very much just adds a bit of interest okay so that's the water and then the other shader that I've got prepared here is an ice shader uh, so this one also is just a bunch of different noise um, yeah just layered on top of one another we've got one uh, one of these noises going into the color ramp which is plugged into the roughness and uh, yeah that's an ice so now the question is how do we transition between them especially if we want one section of this to be one shader and a different section on the same object to be a different shader well the solution to this is by using an object's proximity or distance whatever you want to call it we're basically going to be using an object to drive a, a mask which will be then switching between these two different materials so let's get started. I'm going to create an empty, so I will be using an empty for this, but you can use different objects to do this as well. We might try something later. I'm going to be creating a sphere and um, we shall go ahead and go back into the shader. Let me actually just copy the entire ice shader. We're going to go to the water shader. We're going to duplicate this and we're going to call this our test shader. We're then going to paste our ice shader so now we've got both ice and water in one shader and now the question is how do we mix between them so i will be using a mix shader there we go plug that into shader one plug that into shader two and now the goal here is to mix between them by using this factor and what we're going to do here is use a texture coordinate node and here we go this is the solution here we can select an object we're going to select the empty and now we can drive the mask by using this object's position so if we go into the um, this shading view and we just plug let's just um, what are we going to do let's have a quick look at the object information there we go so if we move the empty you can now see that this uh, this color grid is moving with us because again we are using the object information of the empty so what we're going to do here is plug this 
into a, a, a vector math node. And what this is going to do is basically recalculate the, uh, well, th this information, and we're going to calculate the length. So with that done, we are going to plug this into a color ramp. There we go. And then we can use this as a mask. So before we actually do that, let's have a quick look at what we're doing here. Um, if we scale, there we go, scale the empty, you can already see we've got a black spot that is following our empty around. If we pull up the black value, you can see, there we go, that is working. So let's quickly apply this shader to all of our other objects. So select everything, we're going to go to Object, Link Transfer, Materials, and now everything should have this material applied. And the fun thing is, if we move the, um, the empty, these other objects also get it. So now let's use this to transition between our different shaders. We are going to select the color of that mask, put it into the factor, and voila. Now you can see that this doesn't look very amazing because we've got a perfectly circular mask. So what we're going to do is break this up a little by using some noise. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we shall select the color ramp. Uh, we're going to insert a noise texture and we're going to then multiply these by using a mix, uh, no, not mix shader, but a mix RGB. So the uh, ramp goes into the top. The noise will actually use, sorry, we'll use the color, put that into the bottom. And then if we check this out, um, let's use the factor instead. Okay, so quick update. We now have the noise texture plugged into the mix RGB. We've got the color ramp plugged into the mix RGB. Um, now, if we have a look at this final result, the mask is still quite circular. So what we're going to do is bring in another color ramp. So if we actually just have a look at that, we're going to start clamping this because we need a perfect white and we need a perfect black value within this mask. Otherwise, we're never going to actually visualize one shader uh, you know, to, to, to 100%. Uh, so if this is just kept gray, we're never actually showing the eyes fully. Um, just to quickly showcase that if we zoom in here, you can see this ice here is extremely glossy, whereas the actual ice itself isn't that glossy. Uh, we do have some, some nice specular highlights going on, but uh, it's not as glossy as what we see right here, right? Um, so that is why it's very important to actually bring up this, uh, this color ramp, clamp these values, and now you can see it looks a lot better. So this is looking a lot more um, organic already. Let's try and play around with that value just a bit more. Okay, what we're also gonna do is bring down this white value. Um, that's going to really break up the, um, the, you know, the circular mask that we had going on. Okay, so I'm quite happy with this already. Um, I do wanna add a second layer of noise. So what that's going to do is break up these edges even further. So let's add another mix RGB, add another noise, mix in, um, mix, well, mix those in together, and then we're going to increase the scale, increase the detail. Let's also increase the detail of the first one. I'm also gonna reduce the, maybe increase the roughness. Is that gonna do much? Okay. So let's clamp this up a bit further. All right. So I'm quite happy with how that's looking. One thing we can try to do is add a, um, a power. So a, a math node. I'm going to use the power. There we go. And what this can do is just increase this value. There we go. 
Okay, so we've got this set up now. We've got a mask that's working and now we can play around with the scale. We can move this around. And the beautiful thing is we can add multiple objects. Okay, so if I want more than just one of these empties, you know, if I want ice to be more than just on one spot, well, what we can do is just duplicate this empty, move it somewhere else, and then all I have to do is just duplicate these guys. Uh, whoops, so let's move it over, duplicate, and then what we're gonna do is um, multiply. So we're gonna use a mix RGB. Let's just put that in there, and we're gonna put the color to the bottom. And then we shall multiply. We're going to select the second empty. And there we go. Now, both of these will be going through all of the different noises we have going on here. And then if we look at the final shader, you can see we've got our ice. And because they're both using the same noise, they combine together beautifully. Uh, so if you animate this, this is going to look really organic. So that's that. I hope that this was informative. I really hope it was able to help you. If you do end up using this, please send me your renders. I'd love to see what you come up with. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Make sure to click like if you liked the video. Consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate that. And I hope to see you in the next video. Take care, guys.